They would when we were in the morgue or at the gravesite for a while there. One of these things would affect them as they did Patricia. And finally I just had to say, look, when you come into this, when we're out at the gravesite, or we're in the moor, you know, you have your white coats on. You are professionals. And you do this work, you just examine the evidence, preserve it, record it, and interpret it. And coldly and objectively, I said, if you have to cry, you can cry at night. If I was going to um, try to uh, convey to someone uh, who Clyde Snow is for me, I think I would, um, um, I would say that is um, an exquisite human being. I first met Clyde actually at a dinner, and uh, it was a dinner with Clyde and Jerry, his wife, and Clemencia was there and a couple of other students. And, uh, and he came in, I didn't realize at the time he was carrying notebooks, which I, I didn't realize the purpose of. What uh, draws me to people like Clyde Snow is a combination of uh, really doing amazing things, but um, also maintaining an amazing level of humility. The dinner went on and I learned something else about Clyde, which is that you know, he has kind of nerves of steel. So we had gotten our big plates of food and we were getting ready to dig in. And at that moment, his notebooks came out, something that one of the other people at the table asked him, um, caused him to pull out his notebooks and to start to flip through these pictures of, of bones and digs and body parts. And, and uh, I, I had to excuse myself from the table. I had to get up and step out for a minute because what was utterly routine for him was really, you know, quite, quite um, kind of wrenching, literally gut-wrenching for, for I think at least some of us at the table. Well, I think that he's an extraordinary person in the sense that um, whether he's doing a forensic case uh, for the police or whether he's doing human rights, he sees every individual um, as important and he just doesn't do the work because it's what you do. He really cares about people. Um, he is, especially in the human rights um, arena, he has a level of empathy with the families and, and then a sense of outrage that he keeps under check. With the advent of democracy in 1983, the commission investigating the disappearances collected thousands of testimonies from survivors. Up to 30,000 may have disappeared. Much of the old police and military establishment remains intact. Some relatives are still afraid to report what happened. Others demand that all those responsible be brought to trial. The commission investigating the disappearances in Argentina uh, learned uh, of our interest and invited the AAAS to send a delegation of forensic scientists down to Argentina to assist them. At that point, I uh, contacted a number of forensic scientists around the country, and in pulling this team together, uh, the first person we contacted was Clyde Snow. As one of the world's foremost forensic anthropologists, Dr. Clyde Snow is often called upon to investigate skeletal remains in murder cases and aircraft disasters. Recently, he went to Brazil to help identify the skeleton of Josef Mengele, the Nazi concentration camp doctor. His work in Argentina keeps drawing him back to Buenos Aires, but his base is Oklahoma. We deal with murders up in this country, but we're usually dealing with the individual murderer 
and we can't condone what they do, but we can at least understand that we're dealing with an aberration of an individual mind. These murders were, were planned and executed by a, a bunch of rational men sitting around conference tables in their fancy uniforms and $500 suits. And they were done, they were planned and executed very cold-bloodedly. And to me, that is a very frightening, those are the kind of people I'm afraid of. So when I read about the Argentine forensic team and witnesses from the grave eight years later, I recognized their work as precisely the kind I wanted to do. For me, one photograph said it all. Clyde Snow, standing up during the trial of officials responsible for the abductions and murders of thousands of people, showing a slide of one of the skulls of those victims, Liliana Pereira. Through Clyde, this young woman was telling the court that she had been shot in the back of the head not long after giving birth to the baby she was carrying when she disappeared. Her remains were physical evidence that would corroborate the living witness's testimony. The state-sanctioned murderers thought they'd heard the last of her, but Clyde's work was making them think again. Kliakoff, The Bone Woman, 2004. The Clyde Snow Social Justice Award. Um, he says that he hopes that the award doesn't go to academics and that it goes to the people in the field who are doing amazing work without any kind of academic discourse. And so uh, to illustrate this idea with an example, he tells me the story of um, the, this, this woman whose remains he dug out in Zimbabwe. And uh, this woman was a, I think she worked sewing clothes for people in the community. And um, she noticed that every time the militias came. Soldiers were coming in and grabbing the young girls, raping them in many cases. And um, this woman, this ordinary woman, extraordinary. Every time that she um, got noticed that the militias were coming or approaching their village, she would gather all the cash she had. And what money she could collect and telling them, go out here, walk about eight miles, get on the bus and go to town or get out of here until the militias would like pass by and then she would summon them back uh, into the village. And in this way, she saved many young women from abduction and rape and all kinds of things until they found out that she was doing this and so they killed her. They came into the village, they took her out and they killed her, including bayoneted her. We found some cut marks on her rib. Uh, they put her body inside uh, one huge ant hill, and that's where he found um, her body, her remains. And so, you know, this is part of the work that he did in Zimbabwe. But when he's going back to the story, he tells me, see, Clemencia, this is the kind of person that I want the award to go to, a person who's not... Uh, she doesn't even know what human rights are or the whole discourse on human rights. She was just a... A, a woman by herself in the middle of that part of Africa who did the right thing. And she paid for it with her life. But she knows that there's the right thing to do at that moment and she does it. These are the kinds of people that I think that we should reach out to if we can find them. The climax of the trial was the court prosecutor's final words. Silencio en la sala. Silencio.